Hi, it was the summer of 2022 and I got hired to mix a song. This song took a while to mix because of many reasons. I was a little bit late. They were a little bit late with the revision. I changed my computer so many of the plugins I used in my original mix didn't work anymore and so on. But now it's out. Now it's out for the public to hear, for you to hear if you want to. I will of course link to the song in the description. I want to show you a little bit in this video what my thought process was, what I was thinking about, what troubles I stumbled into during the mix, but also what this song is about, because it's a rather special song, as you will notice. So first, I set up a meeting. I'm on my way to meet Thomas. He have hired me to mix a song he have recorded. I don't know much about it, except that it's nine minutes long. Uh, okay, so me and uh, my friend, uh, Pelle, uh, we have a special band. We only sing songs about cats. Only about cats? Yeah. And I think this is our 14th. That, that's... okay. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 it's a little bit odd, but it's yeah. also very cool. Yeah. Yeah. This time we wanted to, uh, to make a song about uh, uh, people who are allergic. To cats. Okay. So the song is uh, nine minutes long. The first four and a half minutes is, uh, you know, uh, chorus uh, and such. And uh, it is the, the first half is like normal pop yeah. rock song. Yeah. Okay. I asked them to watch my video how to send files to a mix engineer. The link is down below, of course. And one thing I request is some information about the song, how it's recorded and so on. So they send me a text file where we have the key, the tempo, how they recorded it, the song structure, the lyrics and also some mix suggestions from their side. Perfect. You, you wanted a kind of mix from us? Yeah, a rough mix. Just yeah. Just because I want to know what you have listened to when you have recorded yeah. it, because that determines often what kind of feeling you get when you are recording that track. Yeah. And that feeling is probably what you, what you, what you have gotten used to. So I won't listen to the sound quality or anything like that from the rough mix. Yeah. I want to hear the feeling you have had when you recorded it. Yeah, okay, yeah. And the rough mix sounds like this. Working on this song is uh, Erik Edlund. Yeah. He's been on your channel a couple he's of been, times. Uh, he's been on my channel, yes, a couple of times. Great drummer. Yeah. Are there more other musicians on the song? Uh, some, some choir uh, people, uh, all the other instruments uh, we, we play ourselves. So I put the files into my session. I renamed a few tracks because that's the way I am. I want to find things quickly. I also colored them the way I want to. And I realized I had some decision making to do right away. Let's take this acoustic guitar as an example. This acoustic guitar is mic'd with five microphones. We have left, right, room far, room near and close. I don't know where they put the microphones. I don't know if the name is correct or not and I don't care. I only use two of these tracks, one of the clothes and one of the room. So this, this, micro, this guitar is in mono and it sounds like this. And I made that guitar in mono on purpose because there's another acoustic guitar which I made in stereo. I used the left and right microphone and I delayed one of the signals a little bit to make it wider. This sounds like this. I did that so you can hear a difference between those guitars so they're both audible. On the drums I just fixed some phase issues just normal things like flip the face on the snare drum because it wasn't aligned with the overhead and in this mix the overhead was the boss. I will tell you more about that later. I also tricked the bass drum mic because the inside bass drum mic was unusable for me. 
probably my guess is that they put the inside bass drum microphone too much inside of the bass drum so I couldn't use it. I used the outside bass drum microphone together with the sample to get the sound I wanted. And one more thing about the drums, and this is a suggestion if you record live drums yourself, is don't put the microphones too close to the drum. I will show you this with the snare drum. You can hear that ringing, right? So I had to get rid of that. I used this plugin that takes away the fundamental frequency of the ringing, but also the harmonics of the ringing. And that wasn't enough, so I also notched out on another EQ. This is uh, 194 hertz. That was the biggest ringing part. Now it sounds like this. You can still hear it, but it's not as obnoxious as it was before. After that, I made a rough mix myself. There's no EQ compression, just a tiny bit of reverb and such on that rough mix. And I want to have that because I want to go back to my first impressions of the song, my first feelings about the song. But this song is a bit special in other ways also. And, and the last part of the song is solo, but not, not just solo on a guitar, it's solo okay. on a ukulele for four minutes. Okay, the, okay. You got a ukulele solo for in four for four minutes. Yeah. Oh, that's the world's longest ukulele solo. <laughs> yeah. It's a tremendously good performance. It would be fun to hear uh, opinions about ukulele solos. Yeah. I have <laughs> never heard about that before, so. Opinions about everything, but especially <laughs> ukulele solos. If you have opinions about that, please comment down below. <laughs> and the ukulele is recorded with one mic, one mic only. And what I did was that I first adjusted a little bit with an EQ, took away some harsh mid frequencies with the dynamic EQ. So this lowers the signal when the ukulele plays hard. And also raised a little bit of the bottom end of the ukulele. And the bottom end, bottom end of the ukulele isn't in the bottom end, it's around 400 hertz because it's a small instrument. I compressed it a little bit. I also used a multiband compressor to tame some of those harsh transients and then I used one more compressor in this case the Apogee soft limit and this adds a bit of distortion which makes the tone longer to let it sit in front of the mix a little bit of delay a little bit of room reverb and that's it what kind of feeling are you after with this song I'm well, not talking about sound now I'm talking what 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 you should feel when you listen to the song uh, it, it's a um, uh, it's a fireman who who is allergic to cats. Okay. And uh, the alarm goes off, and he's the only one at the station. And it's a cat uh, in a tree. So you have to rescue the cat. Yeah, yeah. but but he he gets uh, every allergic reaction. <laughs> <laughs> So he, so he passes out. One thing I nearly always have to do when I receive songs like this is to automate a lot. Because when people have played together, it, it comes natural that you play louder in the chorus, softer in the verse and so on. But when you do overdubs, it doesn't come as natural. So therefore I automate a lot to make the song live, make the song breathe. So I started with automating the vocals, just a scratch automation to make the vocals sit on top on the, of the mix, because that's the most important thing, especially if the lyrics are important. 
And then I started with the drums. Here's the mostly the overheads and the room mics that gets some tweaking with automation. The bass, I copied the bass track to another track and put a distortion on that track. And that track isn't on all the time. It's off in the verses, on in the choruses and on in the ending, just to make the rhythm of the bass more uh, present. You can hear it more audibly. The guitars are automated and so on, just to make the song breathe. We, we have the, the... Oh, there it is. USB stick. Okay. Uh, I will put this somewhere that I <laughs> that I won't lose it because this this is important now. <laughs> this is important. Yeah. There's a lot of things I can show you with this mix. I also put some Easter eggs in, things that you might not hear the first time you listen to the song, but maybe the third or fourth time. So if you're interested in me going through this mix from top to bottom, please leave a comment and I will make a video about it. I hope you will check this song out. It's in Swedish, but I think that you will get the feeling of the song anyway, even if you don't understand the lyrics. And you will hear a great ukulele solo. This song is, as Thomas described it, about a fireman. Fireman in Swedish is brandman. Brandman. Until next time, Roger that. Yeah.